Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And one of you asked how to do this magic wand effect, so here goes. Okay, so I'm going to try and make this a short one because this is a pretty simple effect once you get the idea. So I've got a project here that's 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second, 10 seconds long. I'm going to come over to the library and I'm going to look for the content section. And I'm going to come down to the search bar here and I'm going to type spark. And you'll see that there's a whole range of different Spark elements that we could use. I'm just going to grab Spark 02 and I'm going to bring it in. Then I'm going to come to Object, Make Particles. I'm going to come to the Inspector, Properties, and I'm going to set a position for the emitter at minus 720 on X. So over here on the left-hand side of the screen. Then I'm going to come back to the emitter. I want to turn on the 3D option here. The longitude I want to leave at 270 and I want to turn the emission range down to 1. Let's set a birth rate here of 375 and a birth rate randomness of 200. The life I'm going to set to 2.4 and the life randomness to 5. The speed will go for 1250. We'll add a speed randomness of 400. And we'll turn on additive blend down here. And while we're at it, we'll just twirl open the opacity over life. We'll set a tab just there at around 80%. We'll make another one at 100% and turn that down to zero for the opacity so they'll fade out towards the end of their life. So now if we press play we've got a stream of particles shooting from left to right. Okay so how are we going to get them to collide in the center with the other stream of particles coming from the right? Well this is actually a really simple process so I'm going to come over to behaviors let me just clear that search option there. I'm going to come to simulations and I'm going to select Edge Collision and I'm going to add it to the emitter. Let's come over to the inspector. I want to turn off everything apart from right face and bottom face. I want to turn the bounce strength right down to zero and I want to set a width of zero. And now let's see what happens. So those particles hit the center of the screen and they stop. But what we actually want them to do is to fall down and hit the floor. So how are we going to do that? Well, the thing that makes things fall down is called gravity. So let's add a gravity behavior from the simulations library just above the edge collision. And let's come over to the inspector and let's set the gravity acceleration of 75 and see how that works. So they hit the center and they fall down. What we need to do however is we need to adjust the floor height so I'm going to set that to 860 and then let's see what happens. Shoot across, fall down, hit the floor and they accumulate on the floor. So this is still not looking right so why is that? Well, we're going to come back to our edge collision behavior and I'm going to set the bounce strength to 6%. And now if we press play, that's starting to look rather better. They bounce back from the collision point and they hit the floor, all looking rather good. What I'm just going to do is, so we can see exactly what's happening here, I'm going to create a floor. So I'm going to come to the top here, Object, New Group. I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a nice big rectangle. Turn off outline, turn on fill. Let's set it the fill color to very dark 
blue like that. Let's come over to properties. Let's center it up. 12 open rotation, X rotation of 90 degrees. And let's just come to where those particles are on the floor there. 12 open the position for the rectangle. I'm going to set a Y position of minus 435. And then I'm going to move this group back down below everything. And now there's, I've got a floor to hit like that. It's looking a bit better. And while we're at it, oh, let's also add a light to start to make this look a bit more plausible. Object, new light, switch to 3D. Let's come to properties for the light. Let's set the Z position to zero. Let's come to the light. Let's set the intensity to 750. Something's a little bit wrong here with the particles on the floor, and that's because we need to come to the emitter and change its blend mode to screen. That looks much better. So particles hitting and meeting the floor. All looking pretty good. Okay, it's all very uniform at the moment, so we need to just add a few more behaviors to the emitter. So let's come to the emitter. So I'm going to come to the edge collision behavior and I'm going to select the bound strength, right click on it and add parameter behavior, wriggle. I'm going to set the amount to 4% and the add apply modes to add and subtract. And I'm going to crank up the noisiness to one. And how does that work? You can see that's now spraying those particles out much more dramatically. Okay, so I'm going to call that wriggle bounce. I also want to come to the emitter and here under emission range, I want to select that. Again, right click, add parameter behavior, wriggle. I'm going to set an amount of 3%. Apply mode is going to be add and the noisiness again, I'll crank up to one. Again, looking better still. Right, the other thing we want to do is to shake the position of the emitter. So I'm going to come to the emitter, properties, and I'm going to click on the position, right click, add parameter behavior, wriggle. And I'm going to set the amount to 15 pixels, the apply mode to add and subtract. And let's see how that works. And you can see that source emitter is now wriggling around and we're getting a much better spread of particles. Now these particles are absolutely huge so let's come over to the emitter scale, set that to 65 and let's have some scale randomness, let's go for 25. What I also want to do is I want to select the spark cell there, come to the library, behaviors, particles and I want to add a scale over life to that. So I come to the inspector. Here under increment type, we want to go for custom. Let's make a bit more space here. Twelve open the gradient. Let's click to make a tab there. Let's select the first keyframe there. Set that to 75. Select the second. Set that to 100. Select the last and reduce that to 50 so that they reduce in scale. And that's a bit better. Okay, so now all we need to do is call this group left, right click, duplicate, and let's call it right. I'm going to select the emitter. I'm going to come to properties. I'm just going to turn off the position behavior there well, we set the X position to 720. We can turn on that wriggle behavior again. Come to the emitter here, and we just need to swap the emission longitude around. So I'm going to go for 90. And the one other thing we need to do is we need to come to behaviors. It's gonna close these up a bit. We need to look at the edge collision. And obviously in this case, we don't want it to bounce off the right face. We want it to bounce off the left face. And now they meet in the middle. 
they collide and they bounce away from each other. Obviously we need to just randomize that all a bit so select the emitter come down to the random seed click that a few times and you'll see that that randomizes that quite a bit we can come into all these wriggle behaviors here click the random seed for those a few times like so and they're not looking the same just want to add a camera because looking at this edge on is not showing it to its best advantage so I'm going to come to object new camera and I want to come to properties and I'm just going to adjust the Y rotation so we're looking a little bit more from the side like that and you can see that that's looking better we're not seeing that line where the two sets of particles meet quite so much okay so now what I want to do is if I rotate the camera a bit I want to fill out the bit where the collision happens with a lot more particles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate these emitters. So I'm going to right click on the left emitter, duplicate. And this I'm going to call emitter straight. I want to remove these wriggle effects from it. So select those and delete them. I also want to delete the gravity. I want to link its position to the other emitter, so I'm going to come to Properties. I'm going to click on the position here, Add Parameter Behavior Link, and I'm just going to drag the first emitter into that source well, and that matches up their source positions. Let's just turn off the right-hand emitter while we're doing this so we can get a better idea. And let's turn off the original emitter for this, and you can see how this is working so these particles are colliding in the middle but they're not falling down and that's going to help us but I just want to add one more thing here and that's I want to add a null object in the center here that we can use to affect the particles so I'm just going to select the circle and I'm just going to draw a circle in the middle it really doesn't matter what this looks like or its shape or anything about it I'm just going to reset its transform so it's in the absolute center maybe let's set the color so you can see what I'm talking about turn off the lighting so you can see where it is there we are in the center so this is not an object that we're going to be looking at it's an object that's going to be affecting the particles so I'm going to select emitter straight I'm going to come to the library behaviors and I'll come down to the simulations category and what I want to do is I want to use attracted to so I'm going to add that to emitter straight above the link behavior there come over to the inspector and then I'm going to grab that circle and add it to the object source well for attracted to and let's turn off the circle I'm just going to reduce the strength of this down to 10 and I also want to turn on the Z include and let's see how that's working you can see that that's swirling those particles around in the center and giving us this nice hot core element here. I'm just going to come back to the emitter. We don't want this to be uh, identical to the other emitter. In fact, I want more particles here. So I'm going to increase the birth rate to 500, but reduce the birth rate randomness. And I'm also going to reduce the life of these particles. So 1.5 for the life and 1.5 for the life randomness. That's looking pretty good. If we turn on the original emitter, we get the result of both of those. Playback is starting to slow down a bit. But you're seeing how we've got that really nice accumulation of particles there in the center. Now, I quite like these white particles, but if you don't like the color, you can come down to color mode and you can use colorize and you can pick a color for your particles so these two different streams for example could have different colors and that could be quite a nice effect I'm going to stick to white but you could also use over life so you could change their, their color over life using this gradient you can do all manner of things you can even pick from color range so you've got a whole different variety of colors let's go for a wacky gradient 
and you can see we've got a, a blend of colors there. I'm going to stick with original, to leave them white. So I'm just going to turn off the camera for one second. I'm going to select my emitter straight and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to drag it into the right hand group. And let's turn that back on again. We need to come to the emitter properties here and again change the longitude. And also we need to come to the behaviors and you will remember that we needed to switch the face to be left face. Let's turn the camera back on again. Come to the inspector. Where are we camera? Inspector, let's rotate around a bit. So we're looking at it like this. And do a quick round preview. So now this is how it's looking. And that's not too bad. One of the things that's happening is that our center particles are happening too soon, aren't they? So let's uh, rotate the camera back around to the center. And what we need to do is our two emitter straight items, we need to make sure they don't actually begin until roughly 12 frames. So let's come to 12 frames. Let's hit I on the keyboard. And again, let's do that for the other emitter straight. So now that goes like that. And those don't emit until that collision point. I just want to add an extra effect. So I'm going to come to the library. I'm going to look for generators and I'm going to add a lens flare, drag it in right to the top of the project. And I want to turn this group to back to 2D. So we don't have collision till 12. So I'm going to come to frame 12 and hit I on the keyboard to abbreviate that. So that doesn't far off until the collision point. We just need to come to the lens flare, just make some adjustments. I don't like that outer color. I want to make that blue. I don't like the radius. I'm going to turn that down to zero. I'm going to select the size, set a keyframe there, enter a value of two. Step forward to frame 21. Set that value up to 125. Step forward to 1. 16 and set the value back down to 50 and that's going to just give us a kick as it collides i also come to come to frame 16 keyframe the streak intensity let's come forward to two seconds and reduce the streak intensity down to zero and see how that looks so that's quite nice another thing we could do is we could select our light bearing in mind that we don't collide till frame 12. We could keyframe the intensity, so keyframe the amount at that frame, come back to the first frame and reduce the amount down to about 160, 150. So that helps to sell the animation. And we could also select the intensity, right click, add parameter behavior, wriggle, Set the apply mode to add and subtract and the amount to 20. Let's crank the noisiness up to 0.8. And that'll give the feeling of this light flickering as the particles collide. So that's pretty much the project done. Uh, you can obviously refine it to your taste. As I say, you want to not look at it side on because we're seeing this stream of particles here. I don't like the look of that very much. It's okay if we see that momentarily, but you're probably better off looking at it from the side here. In my test, I keyframed the camera, so we swept around through it. So anyway, there you go. That's, that's how to create this effect and I hope you have fun customizing it to your own taste. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again on the next one.